This film is just to tell you a little bit about me and some of the decisions that have been made creating these films and what the films cover. You're welcome to jump straight to the content and come back here later if you're curious. Excuse my small assistant. Um, this film didn't happen at quite the time I planned for it to happen. Uh, first things first, these films use identity first language out of respect for and in solidarity with the autistic community that prefer it. Of course, each person has their own preference and those should always be respected. But it is important to consider your role as educators, especially because you are role models and people will copy the language that you use. It's been shown that identity first language promotes autistic identity and that autistic identity has a protective effect on mental health. So it's sort of good for autistics. Which leads me to say the second thing that I want to tell you about these films, which is that they are almost completely research based. The films are quick out of respect for how time pressured your life is. <laughs> as is mine. Um, so I've not littered them with references, but you will find the references in the blurb below, just as like for this one you'll find references that relate to the identity first language choice. Um, these films explore autism as a brain difference, not a behaviour difference, and not necessarily a disability. Autistic experiences, yeah, is very unique, but by listening to autistics and by exploring the research, we can gain an insight into some of the shared aspects of that experience. It's very easy to be dismissive. I've heard people say things like, it's not that sort of autism. But it's funny, those people were always one step removed from the person they were talking about. Um, they were a professional or a distant family member. Those closest, there goes the lighting, those closest listen really hard and look for clues and insight and find it from all corners of the spectrum. So you may be thinking that this is not about that type of autism but I want to reassure you that despite how different situations can seem there remains common ground and those people that said that's not that sort of autism often said it <laughs> defensively. They were people who felt let down by the situation they were in, they felt like there wasn't anything they could do to help and they really wanted to help and they were quite frankly like, fed up with not being supported and not being given relevant information. So these films are free for a reason. I want to help and I want, and I know you want to help too. Why else would you be watching? So if the content isn't for you, get in touch. I will likely be making more films and in the meantime, we can chat. Um, you'll find me on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. I'll pop the links below. These films, <laughs> these films look at how to evaluate targets set for autistic students. In particular, we explore why choosing a target like make eye contact might not be the sort of target you want to choose and what targets you might choose instead. They look at how shutdown and meltdown affect students and how to listen to and respond to what those displays of emotion tell us and how hidden differences can mean hidden needs are going unmet. We also explore brain differences that lead to behaviour differences that you witness and we look at the idea of capacity and context, how educating yourself and your students about the neuro differences can enable rather than disable and finally, we look at tipping and flipping neuro narratives and introducing neurodivergent role models across the curriculum and consider the value that this can have to all of your students, not just the neurodivergent ones. So for me, uh, I'm Jo Grace. I'm a teacher and a mum. I run a thing called The Sensory Project. I have a master's in special education and I'm currently studying for a PhD, so hopefully Soon I'll be Dr. Grace. Um, I've worked in education for decades. It's getting to the point where it's too many decades that I don't, I don't want to say how many. Um, I've supported differently abled students in mainstream and special school settings as a teacher and as a consultant. I think the youngest person I worked with was a day old and the oldest person is 84 or 85. 
I have family members with neurodivergent conditions and physical disabilities <coughs> and I've been a foster carer for children with profound disabilities including autistic children and I am autistic. A couple of years ago my older son, who was five, became the UK's youngest published author with his book My Mummy is Autistic which explores the language processing differences that I experience in a way that recognises and celebrates those differences in all its felt-tip pen-drawn glory. Um, Rutledge, his publishers, said that they welcome the fresh perspective his book brings because it's a child explaining the adult. It's not autism being a problem of childhood or something that you grow out of. Oh, the problems of childhood. Oh, sorry. Um, Chris Packham wrote the foreword for it and he said the book was rendered with brutal truth and remarkable tenderness and this year, don't eat that, my own book The Subtle Spectrum was published and it charts the post-diagnosis landscape of adult identified autism. Steve Silverman contributed the foreword and he described it as wise and compassionate it's an accolade I hope to one day live up to and I better not tell you anything more about myself otherwise you'll end the film thinking what a terrible mother I am. So, have you got anything to say? <coughs> he said he'd like to tell you about his teeth. I hope you find the films useful. Get in touch, it'd be great to hear from you. Bye.